Hello everyone. Today we'll talk about Kanban and we'll come to our another session. So we'll see what the Kanban system is and uh, we already talked about Scrum. So this is another methodology and this is uh, a well uh, known and very well practiced uh, methodology that we use in uh, Agile methodology and most of them uh, the production support or the ad hoc request we manage through this Kanban board. We'll uh, go uh, one by one deep into it and see how uh, this Kanban board is helpful and whether it is fitting your system or you can utilize this uh, system for your need or not. So let's see what's the agenda we have today. So uh, today we'll talk about uh, a basic understanding of Kanban, uh, what exactly mm, the Kanban board is. We'll talk about little background and its history. And also we'll talk about uh, the Kanban board and different areas of Kanban board means what's an exit criteria, what's a whip limit, and how we can make a Kanban uh, board uh, with different columns and that fits your need. Also, we'll talk about different benefits of Kanban. We'll talk about the difference between Scrum and Kanban that we have very high level. And uh, what are the useful metrics that we can use uh, in a Kanban system. And this is the scope of this video. And later, uh, we'll be showing you a different Kanban board in different ALM tool like uh, Rally or Jira, or if you are using TFS, how you can make your Kanban board and uh, you can work on that. So that will be a live example. Ready everyone? Let's begin. What is Kanban? So Kanban uh, is a method of managing the creation of products with the emphasis on uh, continual delivery while not uh, overburdening the development team like Scrum, Kanban is a process designed to help teams work together more effectively. So this framework is actually uh, most effective when you are working on ad hoc request or your unplanned work or production support. So where we actually mostly uh, concentrate on flow of uh, all the tasks that are coming so one way from left to right, it should come in and goes out and we concentrate on not a bunch of work. We concentrate on each and every task, give them a priority. Everyone focused on the flow of the task from left to right. So left you are starting and right you are actually ending. So this method actually be useful for spot your bottleneck. So we'll be finding out where are the bottlenecks. We'll see that during our course, we find out uh, where are uh, the areas that helps us finding the bottlenecks? We've uh, talked about uh, the uh, working on the most demanded work that we have. And then uh, we look into the available capacity at every points of time and uh, work on that. So uh, let's see. Okay, so here um, I'm just giving an example of a real life scenario. So just as you uh, we have a uh, movie theater where uh, you can see from the left, people uh, for future show, they are lined up or booked their ticket and they are allocated already uh, group of people for um, evening show, group of people for matinee show that is already scheduled. And at any given point of time, a group of people goes in and then group of people comes out once the show ends. And then on what the shows are going on. So here, we are actually by talking about the show duration. We know this is a two hours uh, uh, show time. So that's two hours show time that is defined. We know max capacity of seat we have is close to 50. So this is an example. So many sh um, uh, theaters have different capacity. So for an example, we are taking this, um, uh, for this particular uh, th um, theater, we have 50 capacity. And we have a defined time that when uh, the show is starting and when the show is ending. So that is one scenario. Now let's talk about a different scenario. So in this uh, scenario, we see there are many people planning to go to a park. And within that park, uh, that park is open 24 hours. But the park have a limitation of, uh, for an example, six people uh, or 100 people or 50 people, they can uh, occupy 
the park at any given point of time so that they can have more uh, comfort they feel comfortable within the park so what happen is uh, here the people who are uh, goes in it's not uh, a group of people togetherly going in so one people goes in another people uh, comes out from the exit gate and someone is uh, keeping a track of how many people is coming out and the entry gate they are allowing that many people to goes in so here also at any given point of time the park have multiple people but the entry is not with a bunch of people they are taking uh, the allowing people one by one based on the available capacity within the park once people goes out they allow another people to come in at any given point of time they are keeping the park uh, limit for uh, for an example maximum of uh, six people uh, at any um, six people on the park so here uh, the difference between the uh, above picture and this picture is uh, here there is no uh, defined time or show time is defined uh, so we do we can go anytime we just need to wait for our turns when there when there will be a capacity will be go, goes in and max capacity the max capacity is uh, unlimited because we have not limited uh, the total uh, at any given point of time but we have a restrictions of uh, let's say uh, 20 people or 60 people at any given point of time now start and end time there is no start time there is no end time it is 24 hours and uh, the park rule is max 6 person at a time so uh, that's a park rule we have defined for max 6 person at a time so even the capacity is unlimited but we are not allowing unlimited people at any given point of time we are giving people who are inside the park to uh, enjoy and get their comfort so that uh, everyone get the uh, best out of it now we'll, what we'll be doing is we'll correlate these two system with one with scrum and another with kanban that may help you understand what's exactly the uh, similarities or differences between them So uh, if you look into uh, this slide, so this is uh, the above one, the both the uh, picture, the two sections, uh, top and bottom, both are movie theater one. So I am trying to correlate the top one and the bottom one. So if you uh, see the people for future show is actually your backlog or mul uh, for multiple stories you have. The movie theater two hour show is your uh, sprint of two weeks. And uh, the people uh, recently uh, watched a show that's actually uh, the past sprint. So I'm assuming number of people is number of your stories. And the people going in together, that's through a sprint planning. They, we planned a bunch of stories and moved into our sprint. So similarly, we booked a bunch of people and moved into the theater. And uh, similarly, if you look into uh, the details, the sprint duration is two weeks where the movie theater was for two hours max capacity earlier we had a 50 capacity and uh, here the team capacity uh, whatsoever you have planned for your capacity for the particular team so that will be your capacity for a scrum so you, you already aware of scrum i am believing so you are able to correlating this thing and will correlate that picture uh, the park uh, scenario with kanban how it is happening and then sprint start and end it. We already know that similarly the show have a start and end it. So here, if you uh, talk about, look into this uh, particular picture, we actually have changed the entire, uh, uh, entire uh, situation into a real life sprint situation or scrum situation. We have a backlog, we have sprint of two weeks, the stories are moving out. We have a sprint planning. That's where we are actually running a scrum. So that, that's the picture. Now again, this is the park. We are uh, just uh, making the changes on how uh, it was looking into the park and how it is in Kanban system. So active backlog, you can see that the people waiting outside. Six people waiting outside. So uh, six top priority stories in progress. So that's a typo. Six people uh, waiting. It's not waiting outside. Six people are inside. It has to be uh, the inside. Now, uh, people already uh, visited the park. Those are moves out. 
and if you see the stories completed those one by story one uh, stories is getting completed one by one and uh, moving from uh, left to right so that's where uh, you are actually making the stories completed if you look into the difference of uh, those two are uh, similarities i will be later say so uh, show duration no defined show time burn uh, so board duration or any kind of that limitation no no defined show time or no defined sprint time max capacity they are also unlimited here also unlimited but we have a board rule here and the park rule was max 6 person at a time the board rule is max 6 stories at any time so this is a kanban system now uh, let's see uh, the story wise view compared with scrum and kanban how that looks like so here you can see the top one is your uh, scrum and bottom one is your uh, kanban system so in this kanban system you can see the active backlog the stories are going one by one from uh, backlog to your scrum board you have a limitation of six stories at any given point of time max of you can have five four or three then uh, you are actually completing all these stories the stories are going out from uh, current uh, in progress board to completed and you can see uh, no uh, defined story time or no uh, max capacity is unlimited but we have a rule of uh, six stories at a time okay okay now uh, we'll uh, talk about a little background very high level background what is kanban from where this kanban system is uh, came to the software development within agile so uh, if we look into uh, the background uh, it's actually uh, improved communication through uh, visual management so what exactly the kanban is it's uh, is giving you a very wide visibility uh, through a visual management system that you have so when we talk about software uh, development we have a vis- board it's uh, very visual and gives a uh, better communication of what exactly the progress is and what are the bottlenecks we'll look into that on our later slide So this is uh, the Japanese meaning of uh, this kanban is a visual sign or a card, and this was actually invented at Japan by Toyota on 1940, and I guess somewhere uh, 1995 it was started uh, coming as a software development uh, tool or software de- development method within agile areas. So what it is uh, good for is. Uh, it's work on demand based supply so based on uh, the demand coming into the backlog we have the limited capacity and based on that we supply uh, what based on the priorities and it's actually reduced waste so we'll talk about how it's reduced waste uh, the reduced waste in the sense waste of your effort and you we are not actually working on multiple times at any given point of time there is uh, no uh, wasting of time Uh, when you are actually working and you are concentrating particularly on the high priority stories at one given point of time and it's actually uh, gives a maximum uh, maximize your value okay so uh, what are the principles of kanban so let's talk about uh, the three main principles one is the enhanced flow another is uh, visualize uh, your uh, workflow and is uh, work in uh, work in progress limit so work in progress limit is limit uh, the amount of work in progress so there is a mechanism where you can uh, limit the total number of stories you are working on one given point of time and uh, enhanced flow is when something is finished the next highest thing from the backlog is pulled into uh, the play so in the play in the sense that's in your board and once one i am saying is a pulled into your play this kanban system is a pull bed system so it's not someone is pushing uh, the stories to work on i know what are the stories already in my backlog and what i am doing is i am just pulling if i have capacity based on my whip limit and it's actually that's why i am focusing on the particular work that i have once i am done i am pulling another one so there is no enforcement enforcement that people are saying that you need to do these 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 so the primary thing is i am concentrating on whatever is in my uh, in progress list and then i will see what i will be uh, picking up so here i uh, will see when i am saying i it's not actually i here the team works for the flow so if i am stuck the team helps me to uh, proceed with the flow if someone is stuck we help them everyone as a team to progress on the flow and that's where the whip limit is uh, very useful we look into 
the board uh, once i'll talk about the kanban board we'll talk about that and uh, every day you have a board and you know uh, what are the work item we have for in progress what are the work item we have to do for today so every day we talk about okay these are the task we prioritize on in progress and pick up the stories that we think okay uh, not pick up the stories uh, we work on the stories to uh, pick up the high priority story based on today whatever is in in progress so the basic principle uh, here the it's a flow based systems work on vplimit that's uh, we need to understand and uh, we need to find out how that is actually helpful for us okay <clears throat> so we'll talk about the kanban board so we already saw um, that scrum board in scrum board also it's pretty much look similar and it's have actually three different um, uh, columns or uh, the first one it start with backlog and the last one it's done in between we have in progress so we can have multiple uh, in progress state that we'll talk later and if you actually look into um, the vip limit we'll talk about what exactly this vip limit is so vip limit here what i'm saying i'm just limiting the in progress to four so what does that mean as any given point of time i will be working on at uh, maximum four stories at any given point of time so if there is something uh, high importance or anything is pending will not pick that up until we have a room here for another story the total room size is four stories at any given point of time in in progress so this will be this is a right board because we have a four work uh, limit in progress and so we have four stories this is good now what will happen on uh, if we have multiple uh, wip lanes means uh, in progress we have uh, development in progress and testing in progress so what we'll be doing in that particular cases so let's assume this is a um, board where we have backlog where is unlimited dev is 4 testing is 3 and done is uh, unlimited so what will be happening here is even the testing uh, work is done the developer uh, uh, the developer uh, development work cannot be going to testing if uh, the testing columns has already three stories so what i mean to say is uh, i can only pull a stories if i have room so here when we actually do a dsm we always start from uh, uh, done then testing then dev so uh, from right to left right to left okay so here uh, you can see in this particular area so if you see we have testing we have development and within that development we have uh, four stories already so even if i am done with some of the stories i cannot move it to testing because the testing room is full so to have something uh, if the testing team is not having room the developer will work on the testing team and that way they will help the testers to move the stories to done so that they can get a room to move the development story and pick some stories to development so it's a team effort everyone works together and uh, continue with the flow okay <clears throat> so let's assume this is a uh, one area what we do is to get rid of the previous screen that we saw we actually have um, lines between development or between testing for all the in progress stories to identify two areas something i am doing something i am done so development as per the picture i am doing means doing the development of four stories testing also i am doing the development of three stories once the de development is uh, done for any stories they move it to done for the development when the testing is done for any of the story they move it to testing done now here for the testers the testers backlog is development done so the tester will pick the stories if there is anything under done section within development so uh, we'll now uh, explain in animations uh, how uh, this is a pool based system and how uh, that flows between uh, one lens to another lane so assume this is the current situation uh, we have three stories on development doing and two stories are uh, done testing there are three testing is done but i that done one story that you were looking in under uh, development 
that is eligible to start testing but i am not able to uh, the team is not able to start the testing because the testing room is already full so what they will be uh, doing is everyone will uh, work with the testers because the developer is also not able to pick one more stories because uh, their room is also full so we need to improve the flow so that the testing team can go right and the developer have moved the dev done story to testing and they get some room to pick one more story so that everyone needs to focus on why the flow is blocked where is the bottleneck and focus to remove the bottleneck so here you if you see once i have worked on a testing uh, testing story so that is done so here even uh, the testing is done we need to move it to the final done state and then actually will be get some room so the testing is done verified it's moved to the done now we have room on the text uh, testing columns so here what we'll be doing is uh, we um, realize there is a pull uh, initial initialize that pull request is now uh, the tester can pull one story and there is one story available for their back backlog that is the dev done so if you see that dev uh, story now can go for testing and start their testing um, activity now after moving that the development columns now got a room for create one or pull one more system so if there is a pull again you see there is a uh, pull request you can create to pull one story from the backlog and they will be pulling one stories of the backlog so that's where the everyone focus on the pull system to move the stories from backlog to dev to testing and then done so you can have multiple um, columns uh, like dev testing or um, uat in that way you will have to uh, channelize all these stories from backlog to done so and this way you can actually uh, continue uh, moving the stories from left to right so the stories are moving and you are getting uh, getting room over there so here there is another pull request you uh, realized the stories from dev again will uh, go to um, uh, that side now uh, there is one point you need to note that every day during daily stand up so uh, like scrum we used to do daily scrum call or daily stand up in kanban also we uh, do daily uh, stand up and where we actually every day we talk about whatever the story is in dev we reprioritize them and work on the first priority that is in the top so within four stories we'll reprioritize whatever we have been doing so uh, the very first day they will see okay we have two stories and we have two rooms so whether we should prioritize this story or bring up the top priority stories from the backlog so if in that way you can actually work on uh, the priority base every day you do and that's where you pull the stories based on priorities or work on the stories that is currently in your backlog okay now uh, there are some uh, areas what we call a beyond control uh, wip so if uh, you have a board where there is one column uh, you can control that column so in for an example uh, here we have a uat you uh, the team cannot control the uat the uh, business user or the client they will test based on their convenience so will not be uh, if we limit this uh, uat uh, you um, if we say a work in progress limit then there is a high chances of uh, blocking the stories because that is beyond your control so here i have limited uh, uat as three stories at a time and the client is not testing their stories because they are busy with something else and the entire development is blocked so what we do is let's make that uat as unlimited and now you see everything now can move from a testing to um, your uat okay implementing policies or exit criteria so if you have already worked on scrum you already have worked on uh, definition of ready and definition of done so this is a kind of definition of done we'll see uh, where it will be uh, applicable within a kanban board the definition of done normally we used to have uh, once a story is moving to the final stage of your scrum board we used to check that checklist of uh, how many it's made how many checkpoints are meeting whether it is eligible for done so that is one place where you used to put in the scrum uh, scrum board but in kanban what we'll be doing is if this is the board you know we have uat of unlimited we have testing three and dev four we made an exit criteria or policies 
from doing to done. So, if uh, you see this is the area where the story will be moving from this uh, doing to done, we will be creating an exi uh, exit criteria and that exit criteria will be uh, coming here. So, this is your policies or exit criteria, you will make an exit criteria once your stories will be meeting that you will be move it to done. And similarly, you will be having one exit criteria from doing to done for testing. So, you, you have actually two areas of uh, development and uh, testing or any other work in progress where you can actually implement a definition of done uh, or definition of that is actually for Kanban it is called policies or exit criteria. So, any stories that meets that criteria will go to the next stage. For development you have a different exit criteria, for testing you have a different exit criteria. If it meets it will go to the done for testing or development or any other you uh, columns you have. And similarly you can have a final done done exit criteria where you says ok everything is done and UAT is done. So, that way you can keep on uh, implementing the exit criteria. So, for an example, for development one exit criteria I can say all the code review comment has been updated or uh, the um, uh, unit test has completed. So, those are the um, different exit criteria you can provide. For testing um, once it is done you can say a uh, criteria has been deployed to a UAT environment. For development exit criteria you can say deployed to a test environment. So, that way you create the exit criteria and uh, follow the exit criteria once you are saying the development is done or uh, the testing is done. Ok, so now uh, this is very uh, interesting priority lane and expedite lane. What happen is I know I have a limit of 4 stories and I have a limit of uh, 3 stories for testing, but what happen is uh, suddenly uh, you got some high priority save 1 issues and production and we need to work on that immediately. And my uh, this room is already uh, for uh, having 4 stories I am developing. So, I do not have any room to pick a new even that is a high priority I do not have a room to uh, move that in. So, to work on that particular situation there is something called priority lane or expedite lane that we work on. So, if you look into this particular board here we have a uh, development with a limit of 4 one development task is done, testing we have a limit of uh, uh, 3, there are 3 uh, stories is done and assuming for any chances those are not moved to UAT, something high important came up because here I have a room I can move 1 story to test, uh, one, 2 stories from testing to UAT and then get some room, but for any reason those are not moved to UAT. We need, uh, we got some high priority stories at this time. So, we work on a lane that is called priority lane. So, that priority lane is something like this, the priority lane you will be having a separate lane and within that lane uh, we said here is plus 2. If you look into that red box it says plus 2 means whatever the limit each columns have these stories uh, I can have 2 more stories on that column on the priority lane. So, if you have something got a high priority stories it will not look into uh, how many stories the dev limit have, it will only look into uh, how many uh, plus 2 means 2 stories maximum it can work for you can define it is plus 3 plus 4 based upon the frequency of production issues or high priority activities it comes to you. And it will actually work on uh, the same fashion, it will move from uh, left to right and between once it is moved from done you realize there is one more story is came seen and uh, you will start working on that uh, story. So, once your priority stories are done uh, you can uh, still have that uh, buffer or reserve area for further priority stories and uh, once all these stories are done you can start working on your uh, as is uh, regular development work. So, we reserve that uh, priority lane for any kind of high priority stories that comes into our picture ok. Ok, so what we discussed so far is one we talked about a Kanban basics, what is Kanban and uh, we talked about different areas of Kanban board that uh, we can talk about. We talked about a multiple Whipple columns. So, what are the different columns we have with multiple uh, uh, columns having a Whipple limit. We talked about implementing that Whipple limit. 
we talked about a pool based system how we can pull stories from uh, one columns to another columns and uh, what is uh, working with expedite lane so in case of production issues or something comes up how we can work with that now we'll talk about a few benefits of uh, the kanban system so it's a planning flexibility shorten cycle time reduce roadblocks continuous delivery and visual metrics so you have a very uh, flexibility so first point planning flexibility is on your kanban board uh, you are you have not committed for any given numbers of uh, stories for two weeks or three weeks or one week so you have that flexibility to pick the high priority story every day or every moment once you have room you can pick the top priority story so that's where you actually uh, getting the better um, flexibility on picking up the high priority stories that business need now there is another uh, benefits uh, shorten cycle time so uh, as scrum you have a cycle time for an example of sprint start and sprint end two weeks of cycle time here uh, the cycle time is typically a kanban word we don't use that word for scrum but uh, here you can actually have started one story then move it to uh, different columns and it's done you uh, calculated the total cycle time is 4 hours or one day or one day 4 hours that's very short duration so you can actually optimize that way to maximize uh, uh, the delivery and reduce the waste sometimes uh, uh, you are only working on that is required as soon as possible and you can make it uh, ready for release every day or every two days or every three days and <coughs> reduce a roadblock so this is a uh, roadblocks once we talk it uh, talking about reduce roadblocks it's actually talk about uh, the whip limit so what happen is if the testing uh, task are stuck that's a, they have a roadblocks the developer and everyone they are not getting any room to move their stories to done or they uh, they are actually not because their stories are not pulled by the testing team so they mutually help the testers to resolve the roadblocks and have a room so that flow can start so that way if anywhere there is a roadblock anything got stuck if the developer got stuck tester will even they have room they will not get anything for room because there is nothing on dev done so that way everyone mutually work on the stories to uh, continue the flow and that reduce the roadblocks now again continuous delivery definitely um, the continuous delivery is very much uh, related with kanban system because we are actually continuously making the stories ready to uh, deliver and that's where the kanban system is and continuously it's deliver uh, the stories in a flow and very efficiently and visual metrics kanban system have uh, many useful metrics that we'll talk about in a while and uh, we'll talk about uh, with three or four uh, very useful metrics there are multiple metrics that we are not touching today but we, uh, there are four metrics that we will be talk about today so these are the very high level benefits uh, the kanban system have there may be many other benefits we can have but we'll uh, i'm not covering the entire details benefit of here but these are the major and high level benefits the kanban system can have now uh, we'll talk about uh, the difference between scrum and kanban so uh, this will be interesting because uh, most of you already have worked on uh, scrum i believe so kanban uh, what's the uh, basic difference so cadence when we talk about the delivery and cadence uh, scrum has a defined time that we call sprint or iteration but kanban it's a continuous flow we don't have any defined um, sprint duration or any iteration or there is no uh, time box for the total execution it's a uh, kanban is a continuous flow it picks stories and move it to done one by one between its stages release and frequency so normally release frequency scrum it can only possible at the end of each sprint not before that but in kanban system it's a continuous delivery once you are done one story you can mark it for release so if there are let's say uh, 50 teams working on kanban system every team is uh, getting one story ready so the release mechanism they can work for all the team and make all the 50 stories in one release it's depend upon how your release mechanism or the release uh, team is working so uh, this is one of the uh, another difference 
So we'll talk about roles in uh, Scrum. We know we have product owner, we have Scrum master, we have uh, development team. But in Kanban, we there is no defined uh, role of uh, Scrum master or uh, product owner. We have a dedicated development team, and the development team takes help from uh, coaches if they need for understanding the methodology or the framework of Agile. So that they take they are expecting um, multiple people can uh, put the stories on their backlog it's very good if uh, someone uh, is acting as a product owner or story author or business analyst who is providing inputs to the story if there is any story they can have a grooming session frequently to understand the story and if we have someone identified who can give input inputs to the requirement that's okay, but as per the Kanban system, there is no defined role of product owner or scrum master. Key metrics. So, uh, for uh, okay, scope. So, scope is a scope plan that is print planning in a batch with bundle of work. So, that is print planning we are talking about in scrum. We uh, uh, plan multiple stories and plan for that sprint, but in Kanban. So this is a pool, uh, pool based system, we have the scope of currently work in progress, once it is done we are pulling the another story. So there is no um, hard and fast uh, scope we define, this is very flexible and uh, it change every day or every hours based on how the flow is going. Okay, so change mechanism in Scrum, the scope, uh, the scope plan at sprint planning, and no change allowed in the mid sprint. Even though we, as a practical life, we make sometimes some changes in the sprint, but I don't suggest to make any kind of changes once you committed for a sprint. And so that's why I'm saying it's not uh, possible uh, or suggest um, we don't suggest. So it's uh, at, at the uh, Scrum level. We are not supposed to make any changes but in Kanban uh, once we have room we can add one more stories from the backlog and from uh, the dev done for tester or for uh, backlog is for the development and we keep on change the scope because the scope the work in progress scope is so limited that we can every day define our scope. And applicability so where we can uh, apply this uh, Scrum or Kanban. So Scrum is more appropriate in situation where work can be prioritized in batches that can be uh, that uh, can be left uh, alone with some batches and that we can work on a uh, couple of uh, work in a batches. But uh, in Kanban more appropriate in operational environment where the high degrees of uh, variability in priority. So every day there is priority changing, production bugs is coming, high priority, low severity. So based on that, the priority of the stories uh, keep on changing. So Kanban is best fit on that kind of environment where we work on. Okay. Now, uh, understanding different metrics. So the very uh, popular three metrics are uh, cycle time is most popular and the lead times and a response time. So uh, what is cycle time? Once you have actually started working uh, from the development, once you pick the story from backlog to dev, uh, the cycle time clock starts and it ends on once the testing. So particularly this area. So once it is moved to the done state or uh, moved to uh, the state where that is out of your control. So here for this example, the UAT is out of your control. So when it is moving out from the testing, that's uh, development and testing is in your control. So that cycle time, uh, that is that time is your cycle time. And we take, uh, okay, uh, as of now for every week or every month, how, uh, how many cycle um, you have completed, let's say um, uh, five si uh, stories and what is their cycle times. So that way we can actually uh, calculate the cycle times of uh, the story. <coughs> There is another uh, area that we call lead time. So lead time is actually when it is started in backlog and when it is delivered to the business. So when it came from the business to backlog and delivered to business. So sometimes this lead time is also called as customer lead time. So it's actually many uh, areas that is beyond your control. So you cannot control this clock, but some uh, we need 
to know how much the storage is taking for the entire life cycle within Kanban board. So that's called lead time. But there is another important uh, matrix that you can use that's a response time. So response time here is once it came into backlog and moved into first control column. So that's your uh, dev. So how many uh, hours or days you took to give a response to a story. So you also need to look into uh, not only uh, the high priority stories that came into backlog, also look into the stories uh, in the backlog about their age. So if stories are came into backlog long ago and we are not taking response uh, at initially because we are working on high priority stories, so that will hit your response time because if you work for one month or two months later, pick the story, so that will hit your response time matrix. So there is uh, one more uh, matrix that is useful that we call throughput. So uh, as of now in uh, Scrum, we were using velocity or commitment reliability, that kind of matrix. But here we are having talking about the response time, cycle time or the lead time throughput. So what is throughput is, the so throughput is actually um, the area where you see how many stories you have completed within a certain period of time. So within every 15 days, how many stories you are completing? Every one week, how many stories you are completing? Irrespective of their size, we are talking about the count, how many count we are completing in one month and taking an average of uh, every month, how many stories came into done. Within two uh, weeks or uh, three weeks, we can have the matrix. So for this example, uh, so this is a throughput for month. It is 15 uh, for uh, this particular story uh, this particular team and board so 15 story point uh, 15 stories or 15 tasks they have completed uh, within a month so that's uh, your throughput now another matrix that we talked about uh, or mostly use about that's a cumulative flow everyone i believe you saw in your uh, alm tool if you are using jira or zen one or rally or uh, tfs anyway it shows a cumulative flow for any Kanban system that is very useful. Let's, let's try to understand um, what is a cumulative flow and that may help you um, reading the cumulative flow diagram uh, once you see with your Kanban board. So it's not a uh, one time uh, report for one time, it's a cumulative data that shows in a graph and we'll see how that comes up. So let's assume we have two axes. the x axis shows the time or dates and the y axis is called uh, the amount of work. And uh, let's assume this is our board that we have uh, four columns, uh, UAT, testing, development and backlog. So we are actually, let's take, uh, even there is a done, we'll pick only four. And those four will be picking for this graph and example is we'll picking uh, backlog, dev, U, uh, QA and UAT. So how many, are there is coming to uh, that area. So let's assume UAT is the last state and everything is getting stucking up there. So uh, initially first few days, uh, you see, if you look into the bottom of the graph, the uh, you see the yellow and reds are appearing because the story is moved from, uh, moved to backlog and uh, they've not yet moved to uh, testing. So the testing starts after few days in your cumulative flow and if you see that uh, blue is now started coming here and after a few days uh, you can see these uh, rows are increasing and uh, in that way you see now uh, we have equal amount of uh, blue and uh, the red I believe that's red okay and the yellow is backlog that's keep on increasing because uh, that doesn't have a whip limit and uh, your UAT doesn't have a whip limit. That's where the number is keep on increasing. So if you see at this point of time, this shows a flow. Remember cumulative flow always goes upward. It never comes down because we are just adding value. We are not subtracting value from here. So particularly in this uh, situation, we have whip limit on uh, blue and red. So the constantly that is in a equal width, but where we have we don't have any whip limit on backlog uh, and uh, UAT. So that keeps on increasing day by day. So that is how you need to implement uh, the whip limit, understand uh, cumulative flow 
and find out if there is no development fault you will find that line is thin if you are if you don't have any whip limit and development that will be lots of work at one given point of time so now within this cumulative flow let's try to identify what are the cycle time and the lead times we talked about so this time from red to blue where it is starting from red to blue from any diff dates that's your cycle time from blue to the uh, end of your UAT, that's your lead time. So it has, you can make it a lead time at the end of uh, the last row also if uh, you are delivering at that state. So response time, the yellow, when it is starting at yellow and ending at yellow, that's your response time. And this is your work in progress at any given point of time. So that you have a different work in progress for blue, or different work in progress for red. I think th this helps you understand um, what is the cumulative flow and how you can actually work with, uh, understand cumulative flow and work with Kanban. And uh, that is uh, all for today, I believe. And if you have anything else, we can uh, you can give us a comment. You can uh, leave an email below or you can uh, write it us in any way that you can find out in this uh, description with different communication places. Till that time, thank you, bye-bye, and have a wonderful day.